All right, I guess it's time. So, um, so to give you a bit of background of why I'm interested in this topic, um, I work for the foundation and have been assigned recently to rewrite um, our thumbnailing code to turn into a service. And so... Hey, Gio, one, one second. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, this part is... It's not going to be the meat of it. Yeah. And, um, and as part of that, of course, the question comes of uh, how much are we going to still support the old way of making thumbnails? Um, and every time I brought this up, the old debate of uh, is it the foundation's job to support third-party installs, etc., comes up very often. Um, it's not critical for what I'm doing, but I think um, it's a bit uh, annoying that this argument is used and comes up very often, blocking projects or uh, making people not even think about doing specific things just because it's kind of in the way and it's really nebulous and unclear um, and people don't really know um, what the consequences would be. Um, to make changes such as moving heavily to service-oriented architecture, for example, for core. So I'm going to. So we've explored really in-depth specific topics in the previous RRC discussions in the last few months that led to this. But this time I'm going to stick to the overall bird's eye view and not get bogged down into the details, which unfortunately tends to happen with this because it's a very broad topic and people tend to get rabbit holed into uh, specifics. So I think it's fair to say that right now the foundation doesn't support properly or doesn't support at all <laughs> non-Linux deployment, shared hosting, et cetera, and optional software that's not used in production. Basically, anything that's not used in Wikimedia production. Uh, that's how Greg uh, summed up in the previous session, and I think it's pretty accurate. Um, so that's a problem for a lot of people. Um, and so this problem is often framed as service-oriented architecture versus a LAMP stack deployment um, and the fact that moving to services that are written in another language might mean uh, that more and more of MediaWiki's functionality wouldn't work on the LAMP stack anymore. Um, I think this particular um, battle, so to speak, comes up very often because it's the most prom prominent one as of late. Um, Shared hosting, as it, so it came up in the discussions that we had that shared hosting is very different depending on which provider you're dealing with. There's not really a uh, pattern or typical set of software that people in shared hosting have access to. Um, and in a common perception that we hear is that people are stuck with LAMP and that's all they get. Um, and it doesn't seem to be true. I mean, we've talked to uh, shared hosting providers as well as users who mentioned that uh, it's quite common for them to request software to be installed when they need it um, and to kind of expand the horizons of what they can run on shared hosting. Um, and I think in that area we really haven't tried to kind of make the needle move towards things that we might want to turn into dependencies for MediaWiki. Um, that being said, uh, there's a cost to those hosts uh, making more software available to their shared hosting users, and um, it might be impacting the price that people pay for the shared hosting. Like, for instance, if you go to a provider and the cheapest option will be some basic PHP hosting with just MySQL, um, and suddenly as a user you ask them to have Cassandra, for example, they might tell you, fine, we'll provide it, but it's going to be an extra $5 a month. Um, and, and that obviously is going to be a, a barrier to entry for some people. Um, and something I think was very important is that the, the audiences that we're dealing with in terms of third-party installs are very diverse. Um, shared, shared hosting, it, it, it seems like from discussions we've had, is that the, the main reason why people pick shared hosting um, is the cost-performance ratio, which is pretty much impossible to match with VMs for reasons that are due to the nature of shared hosting where um, a host typically will pool uh, different kinds of users on the same machines, Put, like putting, for example, one heavy user with lots of light users, meaning that that heavy user actually gets more performance out of their subscription and they still pay the same amount as the other ones, which is not something that's possible with containers or VMs or VPSs, et cetera. Uh, which means that when we 
consider telling folks who are enchant hosting, well, you know, just move to VPS or to Amazon Web Services or whatever, so that you can install whatever you want. Um, the cost performance ratio is not comparable, and it means that they're going to have to put more money to serve the same traffic, basically. Which means that even though new technologies like containers are coming up that might make setup easier uh, to people who are willing to deal with the common line, um, those shared hosting users are not going away. They're still going to have small wikis for those reasons, and they're in the tens of thousands, so um, we have to take, take that into account into our decision making. Um, so one easy thing that I think we could improve is the feedback loop, which is almost non-existent at the moment, and there, there can be several reasons for that. Um, so at the moment, it seems like we're getting very few bug reports from shared hosting users compared to the amount of people who are running wikis. So if we're talking about tens of thousands of people running wikis that way, and it's so rare that we get bug reports from them, uh, there's a problem because especially since they're running older versions of MediaWiki quite often, like quite rare on, in a lot of cases, we should be getting more reports. Um, and I think something where we are not doing great is documentation, especially if you consider um, like the issue of software dependencies. Like we don't have a template to tell you which, dependent, which software dependencies your extension has. You have to read the whole page to figure out what you need to do and how you need to configure it, et cetera. All that stuff should, should be a lot more simple. And the other issue is that if you're a non-technical user and you've like clicked on a wizard on your hosting uh, provider to install MediaWiki, and that hosting provider has stripped off the MediaWiki logo, which is totally possible, and replaced it with theirs, for example, uh, then you really have no way to figure out where to go to get help if you have a problem with Wiki, unless you know what MediaWiki is, et cetera, which might require a level of technical knowledge that's beyond um, going to a website and clicking, I want to create a Wiki. So something we could do as well is having regular meetings with hosting providers, especially shared hosting providers. They seem to show interest in that. Uh, thanks to the stakeholder group, several of them showed up on the task uh, for that debate. Um, and I think we should have the communication on an ongoing basis because we're making a lot of assumptions about what's possible and what's not possible um, and what the consequences of making big changes to core could be uh, when we could just ask them even though it's still very difficult to get in touch with the users directly, at least we can get in touch with uh, their providers. Um, all right. Um, so I think we need to start thinking about the different types of hosting because they're very different. And especially in the context of, for example, Gabriel recently uh, working on containers and making it a lot easier for people to deploy uh, MediaWiki on containers, honestly, given that Historically, uh, the only thing we support is things that we have in production. Uh, if we want to support more ways of hosting things, we need to have them in production as well. Even like the, the minimum we should have is tests that run an environment that's similar and verifies that our changes don't break that. Um, so that's why between parentheses, I put the ideas about where we could use things or where we might use them now that are similar. So I think we're kind of getting away with single hosts um, being kind of supported uh, okay, just because most developers uh, who work on MediaWiki kind of run a single host machine in the form of Vagrant or install on their machine. So as a side effect, that gets supported, but it's not a goal right now. It's more like it happens that the easiest way to work on MediaWiki is to have a single host set up. And so that means that this way of doing things is kind of supported. Um, but we clearly don't have anything resembling shared hosting at Wikimedia, and we could. It's just a matter of uh, should we build tests for that, or should we find some piece of infrastructure that we have that could be set up that way? Um, but the question is, should we? And what would the benefits be to be doing that? Um, and so my last slide is going to be um, kind of provoking proposal, but I'm going to try and explain why I got to that point of my thinking. So it seems to me, especially given today's uh, discussions with uh, you guys who run Wiki Farms, that the issue of staying with a LAMP stack doesn't really affect you in the sense that um, you have control over your servers and the main attraction for you to be on MediaWiki are the newest features and you're really interested in what's coming next. So I assume that 
um, a transition to service-oriented architecture wouldn't impact you other than making it difficult to upgrade. Uh, <laughs> and that's probably the area where the foundation can work the most. And so this is a what if slide. So if, if we wanted to get rid of that blocker that we have at the moment of the LAMP stack and the fact that core has to run on it, what if we decide at some point in the future to say that um, MediWiki stable version 1.2 whatever is going to be the last LAMP compatible pure PHP implementation, but the trade-off being that we're going to su support it for a lot longer than the like recent stable versions that we do. Um, and the reason why I put that up is that when you look at what, so the then the consequence of that is, well, we're leaving shared host users in the wind uh, with the version that comes after that. Um, but if you look at the statistics, statistics about uh, the versions that people are running on shared hosting, a lot of them, and actually the majority of them, are running outdated MediWeek installs. And so far, the main theory has been, well, it's that way because it's so hard to upgrade for them. You know, uh, they don't necessarily have SSH access, so they have to export all their stuff, go through some wizard on their hosting platform, hope, fingers crossed that things, things work, and they have to upgrade that way, which is um, risky, and so they don't do it. But I think um, something that should be studied and confirmed is might be that they're satisfied with what they have, and that the incentive to upgrade isn't really there when you're running a very small wiki on shared hosting. Because if you look at what we've released in the last couple of years in MediWiki Core itself, as um, in the release notes, there's very little new features, if at all. Like we've changed some defaults, we've done, done some tweaks, we've brought some small extensions into the fold, um, but really there's no huge incentive to upgrade for them. Yes? Um, I'm just going to in interrupt just a second for a point of process. So the, you've actually listed this as a consensus meeting. Yes. So basically is there, the is, there, is, there, is, there is a proposal and you're looking to get consensus on this one proposal. Um, it's more consensus on what we need to do. This is just an idea and it's, it would fall into different types of... of uh, yeah, I would, I would say then this is more of a brainstorming meeting at this point. I mean, I think, but if, you know, if it's basically the sort of nebulous, what, uh, what, what should we do? But maybe it's field narrowing, and I think we can make it into a field narrowing conversation. But yeah, let's let's keep going. Sorry. I'm almost done with speaking, and then I'm going to let everyone in the room have their say about that. Okay. Um, so my impression is that um, people on shared hosting want to they want a wiki. They not they necessarily need, want media wiki. That we don't know. And if we were to tell them that version X is the last one they'll ever get on the LAMP stack, and then if they want to upgrade, we offer a simple, as simple as possible upgrade for them to move to a, a bit more expensive hosting so they could get all the nice new features. Um, it might not be as big of a problem as we think, because they might not be as wedded to MediaWiki as they're wedded to a cheap way to run a wiki. In which case, a cheap way of running MediaWiki 1.29, for example, might cover most of their needs, if not all, um, which are different from people running wiki farms. That's my point. And so what I think is really important that we could do is to work really hard on our upgrade um, experience. Because right now, for Wikimedia, it means making sure that the upgrade works in production once for us, and then that's it. You know, there's no, there's no follow-up work to make sure that it's reproducible for other people, that it's easy, et cetera. Um, and especially if we transition to a service-oriented architecture, that specific um, transition has to be built with third-party users in mind first. And it should make things easier for us as well. So that's where I'm at. And now I'm turning the mics back to you about that general topic, not necessarily so so what what idea. what so what is the thing if you want to do consensus what is the what is the so there should be an answer to that that we're trying to get consensus yes. on yes what is the answer that you want to consensus on what is the level of support that Wikimedia should provide and for what types of hosting? That's a question. So if, if you have a question and you're not proposing an answer, that's not a consensus meeting. That's a, that's just, that's basically a brainstorming meeting. Okay, and that's, that's fine. We can have that kind of meeting. I just want to make sure, one of the things, the reasons why is because like this will be a mess 
if what you're trying to drive for is like get a consensus, like decide, and by the end of this meeting, we're no, going to make a decision. There are like, definitely not enough in the room to do that. Okay, and that, then that's my point. Is like let's make sure that that we're we're talking about like are we, so basically this is more of an earlier stage meeting at that point. Yes, I mean okay. you know such a big decision can't be made with uh, the people who are in this room. I think. But we could have ideas about what we could do. I think one um, topic that came, or a theme that came up repeatedly in conversations with third party users is that one of the big attractions of MediaWiki is that it's the same software package and user interface as is used on Wikipedia. A lot of people, that's their first contact with wikis, that's how they know to, to use it and um, they want to use the same thing. And there's very powerful features in there too. Now the, feature, uh, the problem is as we develop new features like Visual Editor, this is no longer part of the um, plain PHP install. So a lot of third party users don't benefit from all this new development work and uh, so this, these two experiences diverge uh, for third party users. And I think that's longer term, right? in the short term there might be people who are okay with that, but I think in the longer term um, MediaWiki might lose this attraction of being the same thing as what they experience on Wikipedia. There will be more, more and more features that, are, that they expect that are not there out of the box. And so I think we need to find a way to provide, keep providing people with the experience that they like on Wikipedia um, and have them participate in all the development work we're doing. Um, the thing that uh, they, a lot of third party users don't want is to spend a lot of money and maintain uh, their own servers and um, have a complex installation experience and uh, upgrades especially are a very painful topic. So a lot of them just don't bother because it's, they've been burned once or twice and don't try again. And so I think if we can address those things and give them the full experience, I think then from a high level, I think that we can um, serve a lot of these third party users pretty well. So I think I'm, that is, count that as a vote for your proposal. <laughs> okay. Uh, so last year, um, Tim basically said that um, we're not at the point where we need to fork and I don't think like, we haven't reached the point where it's like you absolutely, we have absolutely features that you need non-PHP stuff to run. like. Basic vanilla media wiki still works fine on pure PHP, and I don't think there's like some critical feature that we want to implement that will require people to have not PHP. And I don't think like I don't see us at the point of like we have to fork now, or because there will be a significant amount of people who will still support the fork, and that will lose developer traction for you know whatever we continue with. Um, and I also think there are like there are a lot of things we don't support at all well like that could be dropped significantly earlier before you say like we're going to drop shared hosting support like we support media wiki on windows like that i think that would be like one of the first things to go before we like cut all ties on like pure php hosting well one thing i that was on the documentation slide is that i think we should be more explicit about what we do and don't support right now because for people who are not in touch with the community, they show up and they think that it's going to work fine with Postgres on Windows and stuff like that, and they try and they have a terrible experience. Whereas it could, we could be really explicit about it and say, this is volunteer maintained and it might not be in good shape when you show up on the page and try to figure out how to make Postgres work, for example. Yes, definitely, I agree. Um, I can only talk to my experience, <laughs> but it might be helpful. So um, I maintain a bunch of wiki farms, um, both within our corporate firewall as well as outside for partners to share information. We create a lot of small um, community wikis that are organized around a particular topic for a particular customer. And um, so we provide the infrastructure and we provide, uh, we never provide just an empty blank page wiki. We also go through a modeling exercise. We Most of our wikis use semantic media wiki, so we go through a semantic modeling exercise where we come up with using semantic forms, forms for data entry, different namespaces for different types of material. So we provide not just a wiki, but, um, but a whole 
infrastructure, a whole something to hang their information off of to jumpstart their process of contributing content. Um, so I found myself spending quite a bit of time maintaining the infrastructure. Um, we do use um, a custom-grown wiki farm approach where we share the media wiki code as well as the extension directories across a number of different wikis on the same VM. So at least we don't have to upgrade individual wikis one by one. But we, um, so we're not in a shared hosting environment. We have our own VMs, but I am responsible for maintaining, you know, making sure the OS is upgraded, maintaining, and we do keep up to date with. Well, I have to say we're at 125 now. I haven't quite gotten to the time to do the 126 upgrade yet. But um, we have developed a number of custom extensions that we use and um, that we have open sourced, that we have available to the community. And so we spend time making sure that those extensions are updated. So this, you know, the last version supporting LAMP isn't going to work for us because we want to continually keep up to date with changes. We contribute things to core, so we're obviously going to want to be able to take advantage of those um, improvements to the infrastructure. Um, so I'm looking for an experience where I can upgrade more easily than I can today. Um, and going to a service-oriented architecture is a little bit worrisome to me. And I know that I will get benefits, and I know I will love it when I'm there. But please help me to make sure that that upgrade, or the installation and upgrade experience is easy so that I spend less of my time maintaining our infrastructure and more of my time doing what is necessary and I love, which is developing new extensions that can help our material really shine and that we can contribute to the community. So I find increasingly I'm spending time on infrastructure maintenance and less time on creative use of the technology and helping the community grow. Makes sense. So there's a lot of overhead right now. Yeah. So um, the, the solution you had suggested up there, uh, drop support for pure PHP after 120 whatever, assumes that you have something that you don't have, and that is a vision, a roadmap for where MediaWiki will be. Mm -hmm. And really, the, the way MediaWiki has developed is it's all based upon what the individual developer wants to do, has motivation to do. Sure, there's features that, you know, Wikimedia wants to implement, like Visual Editor and Parsoid. But when it comes to core media wiki, what really happens is whatever an individual developer, whether it's Wikimedia Foundation or a volunteer, has the stamina to do. So. It kind of makes me wonder about that, you know. Oh, we're we're just going to drop this in, you know, 129. So how how would that work? Because we don't have that sort of governance model or anything. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's a, a question that needs to be settled first. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, it implies a lot of coordination, decision making that doesn't really have structure at, at the moment. Um, but then I think we, I think it was Kunal that had an interesting point about what's the upside. And then maybe we can turn to Gabriel for that. Well, I don't want to cut you off, but um, to, we, ha we need to have a really good reason to do this. We shouldn't do it just because it's new and uh, it might make things a little easier for Wikimedia development. It has to bring a lot of value to what's going to happen after. Like right now, MediaWiki Core is not moving at all in terms of features, and maybe that could kickstart uh, it moving again through the services that will be extracted from it, but I'm not sure. So then again, I think that comes back to we need a roadmap to say where this is going and why it's worth it, whereas right now it's just a general idea of we should do that, but um, without strong uh, arguments about why we need that. Okay, so Basically, the actual problem that we have up here is how it should be supported, but where is the problem? The problem is that we only, Wikimedia only supports what Wikimedia has in production, which is only a small subset of 
what people uh, use MediaWiki for in the wild and the way they use it. But why is that? If you're looking at MediaWiki in the sense that it's another Wikimedia project, or did I say, well, MediaWiki, but yeah. If you look at a lot of the other projects that are also not the English Wikipedia, they don't get any real support for their users either. So maybe it's just the same sort of thing as that, is there's just no emphasis on it. That's true, and I think there might be a government, a govern, yeah, right, governance yeah, no issue there. For this, and, there's no vision for the other ones that don't know where they want to be because they don't really care about it. So how do we get people who would put more resources into this and the like to actually do that? Is that even possible? Do you want to speak to that? I mean, in the previous session there was talk of uh, trying to start a MediaWiki foundation that would focus on those issues. But are, why does this need a separate, a separate foundation? Would because, say Commons need one too? Because years, well maybe, <laughs> uh, or a chapter in that sense. Um, uh, because we have the example of the German chapter having good independence and found a way to develop technology that I thought was needed. And now we have Wikidata. Right. And so that means that the same thing is probably possible for commons or for smaller wikis that don't have a chapter at the moment. That seems very drastic. But it, it needs, the thing is it needs people who are courageous enough to start the effort. I mean it's, it is, you know, it's kind of far-fetched to expect the foundation to set up all these external things and then try and find people. Um, I don't run the foundation. <laughs> I don't have an answer to that. Um, for, for you know, there definitely a strong case to be made for wikis that are officially part of Wikimedia Fold, for sure. The fact that Commons doesn't get enough support as it is, but then this is even further away from the state admission of the foundation. Media, supporting MediaWiki, the software, is not you know for so that governments can run private wikis or corporations is definitely not part of the state admission of the foundation. What is part of it is all the wikis that are part of the Wikimedia fold. So I totally agree with you on that and that there's a there's a, a no over focus on English Wikipedia which is unhealthy. But uh, this question is more extreme because it's so far removed from the day-to-day -day, uh, problems of the Wikimedia but no, not Postgres support, for example. We don't run Postgres anywhere. Yep. So, you know. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Um, could you move the slides back one to uh, your suggestion? Which one do you want to see? Uh, the one with the hypothetical scenario oh, about yeah. dropping support. Yeah. So, I suppose I'm, I'm just trying to get a clearer picture of exactly what problem we're trying to solve for here because a couple of the examples I've heard brought up were about visual editor. And as far as I know, Visual Editor is not part of MediaWiki Core. Um, no. I should know that because I'm a Visual Editor developer. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm just trying to figure out why are we having hypothetical scenarios where we drop pure PHP support because of extensions? Um, what, it's, what, oh, the, is MediaWiki Core, are we, are we trying to add something to MediaWiki Core that wouldn't currently work because of your PHP or? I guess there's also a big question which is where do we draw the line between the basic MediaWiki experience and core. is that the tarball or is it? Core and the bundled extensions are the basic MediaWiki right. experience. But then, it, then there's a big question that's been going around for a while is that should we make VE part of the default experience? Even though it's a separate extension in terms of you know repository etc, uh, it could be in the tarball for well, example. Well it's still be an optional extension so it would really be a requirement to run MediaWiki so you wouldn't need to drop your PHP support. But I think for the issue is more with core and this is, I mean, I'm just channeling things I've been hearing and I'm not affected by that problem. So I cannot answer to why it would be useful to break down core into okay. more parts. Maybe some uh, other people would do. Would someone else like to address that? I mean, I guess that's the biggest point to figure out whether that's a big problem or not in the long term. Right, yeah. Right, but that means you basically you're proposing merging all Wikimedia extensions into core? No, but like Visual Editor is editing pages or pages of MediaWiki. Sure. And the editor that most people see is Visual Editor. And therefore, they will, in your mind, will think 
Okay, sure. Um, so selling unpainted cars is hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. um, it's my keeper. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Uh, does anyone else think we can spend more time on this? I mean, well, I, I, I think what's what's the agenda for this meeting? Like, what is what, is it just discussion, or is it, and is it just this one, or like how how do you want the discussion? So this is it. This is the agenda. I guess so. I mean, uh, it is a very nebulous topic, so it's really difficult to narrow it down to specific proposals, and I don't really want to do that, you know, and assume that whoever was in the room today was enough to make a decision about one of those things, because I don't okay. think that's the case. So, yeah, okay. But I think it, so, it is yeah. important to see how people feel about those ideas, and that's why I thought it was useful to put a provoking suggestion mm -hmm. up there to see what the general reaction is. Yeah, okay. Let him speak. And then, I've, and then I've got something after him. Yeah. Thanks for this interesting presentation. Uh, I guess uh, having, uh, I'm speaking on behalf of World University and School right now, which donated itself to Wikidata this past autumn, uh, kind of through our own organizational process. We're Creative Commons also. Um, but we're in a sense not Wikimedia, and we would conceivably uh, want to um, develop a roadmap for Wikimedia far-reachingly or be part of that process um, out 10, 20, 50, 100 years um, in all 8,000 languages and 200 countries' main languages as universities. So if that could contribute to this conversation, um, that would be my response to this query that would be part of this consensus process of us all speaking into this microphone um, at different times. Um, beyond the, we don't have monies yet, and beyond the question of monies that you're raising, uh, World University and School has this kind of Creative Commons core side and where revenue streams would come from a variety of different sources uh, for free MIT open courseware, Yale open Yale course degrees, for um, a universal translator for a 3D interactive film realistic virtual world with languages in it, and then a commercial side. Um, and how that unfolds is a question too. But that could be part of this non-Wikimedia deployment question that could inform the Wikimedia software uh, development ahead if we were part of this conversation um, as another contribution. So um, let, me, let me speak to why the question of MediaWiki Foundation comes up, especially because I frequently raise it. So the, so by the way, this is Rob Lanfear. Um, the, the reason why is because of normalizing where the funding for our projects come from relative, and where our fundraising drive comes from relative to what we're trying to accomplish. So for Wikimedia projects, or excuse me, for, yes, for Wikimedia projects, it is, a very straightforward thing. People are generally don't, especially for Wikipedia, because generally speaking, when people donate to Wikipedia, they're donating because of our mission and because of what Wikipedia represents. Um, and as we move away from the mission or as we move away from our core sites, then it becomes harder to justify the spending associated with what we're doing. It's not impossible to justify it, it's just harder. And so part of what this session I would hope results in is in us sort of articulating a fundraising model and figuring out how to, you know, if the Wikimedia Foundation is the right foundation to raise money for, for example, intranet software for big, corporations on their intranets, right? Like that's, 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 the, that's sort of the extreme of things, but um, generally that's, that's the problem that we're trying to address. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You were there first. Okay. Hi. Um, I, honestly, I feel like this, like it, it needs more justification about why the status quo is like, not okay from where I'm sitting. Like, it doesn't seem like 
Like I know this is a, this sort of idea has support for a lot of people, and vaguely, like it's felt that service architecture it doesn't work with the current situation. But ultimately, for like this proposal feels like, in some ways, lacks justification of what the problem we're currently getting into with supporting these groups are. Like, I don't know. It feels like we're talking about taking a rather significant step without really starting from the beginning and talking about like what sorts of thing benefits this would bring and why we really want to do it if we wanted to do it. Like obviously that's up in the air, but um I don't know. It feels like it needs some kind of foundational support like mm -hmm. what is wrong currently kinda it needs to be more fleshed out. I I totally agree with you, Brian, that this really needs to be fleshed out. But again, this goes back to governance. How do we make decisions and what do we, you know, how do we drive the development? Um, Scott McLeod, is that how you say your name? I just want to make sure. Um, he, he said that he, his organization could be involved in that discussion and that would be great because then we would have more voices in the uh, you know, what happens with MediaWiki and how do we make those decisions instead of just, well, MediaWiki is Wikimedia's baby, that Wikimedia does whatever it damn well pleases. So, there. So I've heard a lot of people asking, what is the problem that we have to suddenly have to decide this? And my take on that is that there's kind of two things going on. We've got the defining the core media wiki experience. We're really kind of pushing towards having visual editor be part of that. But visual editor depends on Parsoid. And there's, it would take a lot of work, but it would be possible to make a PHP version of something like Parsoid that visual editor could use, but nobody wants to put in that work. And, and the second thing is that internal in the uh, Wikimedia Foundation, there seems to be more and more of a push towards doing things outside of the traditional PHP stack, pushing them into external services and not really thinking about, well, what would somebody, can we provide this? Maybe not at the level that the WMF requires for their cluster, but for smaller third-party wikis, could we provide something that they could use in PHP? And that question is just, no, we don't want to put the work into that either. So this question seems to come up just because we have a lot of things that would take extra work and WMF developers that are doing these services don't want to put in that extra work, so they want to instead drop the support for anything that's not the WMF cluster. Well, I think um, there's two parts. One is, um, as I said earlier, I think features that we develop um, require some services. And I think there are good reasons, uh, software uh, architectural reasons, why those are using services. And um, putting in the effort to also provide a parallel um, implementation in PHP of everything that we do has a significant cost. We can't basically, using services allows us to use third party, existing third party solutions like for thumbnailing, for example, or for other tasks where other um, organiza organizations have the same needs. We get to use MathJax for math rendering, for example, and other foundation is maintaining that. We don't have to do that work. Um, so there are big benefits in it for us. And users want to have the same experience, And but, but uh, I think, personally think, that we can actually solve this problem if we take this seriously, that we provide the same experience with all the interesting features to third party users at a reasonable cost and very simple. Right now, I think we spent a lot of resources trying to um, be compatible with all kinds of combinations of PHP, environment, whatever. There's a lot of uh, complexity in there, and I think the most, if we want to optimize for given limited resources 
provide the best possible third party experience. Um, I think we have to cut down on this, all, all these variables. We have to limit the number of combinations we have to support because I think it's just impossible given the small number of resources we have. And um, I think there are now technologies that uh, enable that. They are fairly new but um, are already supported in all the major distributions like containers. And um, also the other development is that um, virtual machines have become fairly ubiquitous and cheap. So you can get a recently checked uh, I think two gigabytes RAM and 20 gigs of storage or so for three bucks a month, uh, definitely five bucks a month. So it's, it's no longer out of reach for most people. And it's not that different from shared hosting. So I ultimately think that if we focus on providing a basic set of features that mirrors what they, people expect on Wikipedia and target the next generation of what people now use for, for hosting, um, I think we, we provide users with a better service. There's also overlap with developer needs. So this is not just for out of love for third party users because we also need to set this up for continuous integration. We need to set it up for development. And um, so a lot of the work we, can, we put into this can be used for our own purposes as well. So it seems like the trade-off we'd be making if we did this is uh, if we got rid of, if we switched to service-oriented architecture, we would probably lose the tens of thousands, whatever, of shared hosting people. Because whatever we might hope for, they're probably not all, they're probably, you know, a bunch of very non-technical people who, for the most part, are not going to go out and buy a, buy a Get, switch to a VM host and install a bunch of services. Even if we made a ridiculously easy install, because it's a clear technical difficulty step up, regardless of how easy you make it. So it seems like the trade-off to think about is, on one level, what do we get from these shared hosting users? Uh, what rate do they turn into people who provide useful contributions to, to MediaWiki itself? Uh, how often do they find it to be a gateway to contributing to us, uh, to becoming core contributors, to writing extensions that we find useful? And uh, this is all kind of from a, you know, what the foundation wants and its mission standpoint. Uh, obviously, it would be upsetting to a whole bunch of community people if suddenly they couldn't use it. But you know, from, from a what the foundation itself wants to do, that's probably the, the trade-off to consider. Isn't the goal to collect the world's knowledge and yada yada? Some open, of the world's knowledge is not in our projects. Open based knowledge, only though. Media wiki. Open Some of the open knowledge, like uh, even I open know, the knowledge, Wikia usually does with fandom, whatever. All sorts of open, like, there's an argument to be made that supporting MediaWiki for allowing people to set it up very easily is part of our, the goals of our mission. At least you can make an argument for that. Because um, it's a form of collecting knowledge and it's enabling people to collect knowledge, including those who have limited technical skills. Although that argument taking to its natural conclusion says we should start, like, be a hosting company, which I don't think is a good idea. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so to to Brian's exact point, that the right across the street here is uh, the Gladstone Institute that runs Wiki Pathways, which puts and it's a public website. So this is public knowledge, and it's very useful knowledge. It's biological pathways for like how an organism handles insulin, for example. But that's never going to be on any Wikimedia site, but it's still part of the sum of human knowledge. So if we're talking about, you know, a mission connectedness, that is, that is a big part of, you know, that is a benefit that you get. Um, Jill, could you pull up the etherpad? Uh, yeah. Um, I linked to an announcement that I made just before Christmas 
and there's a three-step install process for uh, MediaWiki with Visual Editor on a VM, and it's basically you purchase a VM, you paste a command into the command line, press enter, and then you answer two questions. And the first question is which domain is your wiki going to run on? The other is should it update every night? So it is possible to um, do this with modern technology on very cheap hosting in very cheap hosting environments in a way that only requires the ability to copy and paste and click enter and answer two questions. That's a screencast too if you want to check it out. Not not what? to be um, Brian Davis, not to be entirely antagonistic to that point. Was the Gabriel. link at the top or I don't know. Um, how, how many hundreds of active users and bug reports do you have on that? And how many different MediaWiki major version upgrades have you supported it through? <laughs> it's a rhetorical question since it was announced just before Christmas. <laughs> but I think um, we've gone through one version upgrade that added uh, slash API slash rest underscore v1 automatically overnight on all the labs VMs that followed the upgrades. And um, it is definitely possible. Yeah, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not trying to be antagonistic, but I, I am, I, I guess, trying to emphasize the point that um, it's a very new concept. And to, to base a, a major decision change point on, on a concept that's approximately two weeks old in experience, and I know that we've been talking about it for years, but um, that that's and then maybe sauce. 15 years from now we'll have a debate about should we drop container support <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we have to be careful about the decision I guess and that goes back to my point that if we play with new things like that we really need to dog food it to a serious extent otherwise it might suffer the same fate as shared hosting support in the long term uh, I think uh, Kim asked uh, why do we need a separate foundation to do this and I think, and I think Mark also said that it's in the foundations, the Wikimedia Foundation's purview, to uh, support um, shared hosting and like some of all knowledge. But I think also third-party MediaWiki users have gotten frustrated at the foundation's lack of support and have entirely given up on the Wikimedia Foundation supporting it, and now have basically come to the only solution being having a separate foundation. And in some cases, in like in my mind, it would be really nice if the Wikimedia Foundation actually decided to uh, support third-party users. But it's like I think we've given up on that entirely. That it'll ever happen. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's also a case to be met for that. In you know, with the, if the scope is support third-party open content users, you know, and, and be in touch with all the people that we invite, you know, we, they, you know, you guys are coming, so obviously we could do more than just invite you to those events. Um, and we know who those first partners would be. You know, we know which are the biggest uh, MediaWiki deployments for open content uh, other than us. Um, so yeah, we could also make a case for fighting for a team to be built to deal with those issues. Um, focusing specifically on the needs of the organizations that we know. Um, because we have, you know, we have to focus still on open content and not, and, and not focus on making it easier for a corporation to have a private wiki, which is really far from uh, what people donate money to us for. Um, uh, another way to look at it is, um, so the mission is to help people host open content. And right now, so if you have another project, like you said, that doesn't seem like it would fit in Wikimedia sites, um, we could also consider the idea of being a host for open content wikis. Um, and by, that would be a huge project, but if we, if we venture into that area, it would naturally make us work on tools that support wiki farms because we would be essentially running our own wiki farm for whoever can justify that their content is open knowledge. Um, and then that would be dog fooding what you guys need basically and then kind of um, solving that problem of helping third party users who have similar needs but don't want to jump on the bandwagon of that farm that we're running ourselves because uh, obviously that can't be the only option possible. 
Um, but yeah, I think that's also something that we could justify as a project for the foundation that would, as a side effect, support third party users by having um, a setup that's really similar to what farms are doing at the moment. So it, that, that's an intriguing point, but if you, if you look at that wiki right there, Wiki Pathways, they have a ton of customizations done on an old version of MediaWiki. Uh, click on Create. They, they've done a uh, purely JavaScript uh, pathway creator. They used to rely on people uploading, oh, wow, well, you don't have permission. <laughs> they used to rely on people uploading, I think, GIFs or F SVGs, but now they've developed uh, JavaScript uh, that lets, lets you do that. Um, and edit it entirely on the website instead of, uh, you know, on an offline tool. And if you're if you were to develop, promote your idea of a wiki farm sort of thing, you would have to, to make it, pers you know, to make it really good. You'd have to say, okay, well, these people can deploy their own software on, on the wiki farm, which yeah. maybe you know that's fine, but. But it would also give us some visibility into when we're breaking things, because if that sure. happens on our servers and we are responsible for the upgrades and rolling them out on that farm, then we'd immediately realize when we're breaking their extensions. So, but, but I also wonder how much, how much of this, uh, oh, we're going to control all the uses that we care about, how much of that really fits in with the open source or even free knowledge mindset? Because why should you control all the uses? Well, this, you know, you could argue that it's still an open source project and, uh, and there's, you know, control is relative if you're bringing all these users that are going to be part of the fold, so to speak, and that are going to be working with us on what the direction of the software should be. Um, you you know, can also argue that China is a democracy. No. <laughs> Uh, to Brian's point um, about not basing a decision like this on, on prototype software, I totally agree. Um, I think the timeline uh, that we have in mind here might be slightly different. I think it um, might be good to clarify when you actually think this might happen. I don't so know. you it, said. You what's said, the urgency? That this always comes back to that decision. What's the urgency to move the line on what the core experience is? Um, I think the urgency is to have a clear path forward that um, that we know we will be able to solve this problem and have a way to prioritize these solutions so that we can actually make headway with limited resources because otherwise we just kid ourselves and say hey we support everything but actually we support nothing. Um, so I think in the short term, we should really improve the documentation about how honest we are about what we support, because we're not right now. And there's a lot of kind of false promise and unsaid things on the pages where you just assume that you're going to be able to do lots of things that you actually can't, and you find yeah. out quite late that that's the case. And we waste our own time by helping people on IRC that encounter the same problems all over again, uh, having to deal with the same configuration mistakes repeatedly and um, we, we waste other people's time. So I think we have to be very focused in how we want to solve this, but I think we um, have to get clarity soon about how we're going to solve this. It doesn't have to be solved um, for very, very soon. It doesn't, this decision on dropping support doesn't have to be made prematurely. I think we should cross that bridge when we get to it, but I think it would be good to have clarity on this is the direction we are moving and we need a solution for this. Mm -hmm. And um, be serious about actually making that happen. So I would propose that <clears throat> if, we, if we are going to be clear about this, then we need to be clear about this. So in other words, like I think one of the things we're having is a game of chicken going on where where nobody wants to actually make a proposal with a date on it, um, or, and, and because they don't want to be held to, like, well, yes, we have to get these X amount of things done. I think we can actually 
have a goal, we could come up with a goal today for when are we going to, what, what is our goal for when we should make a decision by? And, um, and let's just talk about like what does, you know, what's, a, what's our plan for a plan? Um, because right now we don't even have a plan for a plan. Yeah, and I guess we need to uh, plan for how we're going to make a roadmap, if that's a dependency to making this happen in any shape or form, or not making this happen. Uh, how, like, what group of people should work on that, and how should that happen? Mm -hmm. And I'll just throw something out there. Six months. Like, okay, so by July 1st, like, we're going to have a plan for a plan. Okay? All right. And I think um, one of the other issues is we keep saying, okay, well, we're going to plan to make a decision, but the question is, who is making the decision? Who is, if we're going to decide, we're going to support these platforms, we are going to support these operating systems, who is going to decide that we're going to do that? And the problem I think right now is we don't really have any particular, particular governance structure where someone, a committee or somebody or something can sit down and decide, okay, well, we're going to drop Windows support for the official media wiki fork. And uh, we need to come up with some sort of idea that we're going, that either the foundation is going to set down as this is it, or that the community comes to a consensus on and that we're going to follow this governance structure where this group of people decides what the future of the project is going to be. Regarding the timeline, I would actually propose to first demonstrate that we have a solution and then make a decision because I think that's a precondition for making this decision. We shouldn't just make a decision, oh, we said so half a year ago, we don't have a solution yet, but we will drop support nevertheless. I think um, if we, we should get serious about doing this now, and if we see this is working, then we can make that decision. Um, really, I, I think it needs a concrete proposal here. Before we start talking about who can make a decision, a concrete proposal that's discussed on WikiTechL is a prerequisite to any of that stuff. Like, some people are apparently interested in doing this, well, they should make a proposal and send it out with concrete, thing. like, it's up to the people who want this to make the proposal, in my opinion. So, so for me, a, a key thing that I don't know that I've, I've actually heard said aloud here and, um, I probably didn't even type into Fabricator because I'm a horrible, horrible, lazy person. Um, we have perennial debates within the Wikimedia Foundation, uh, within the product development teams, within the, the architecture group, within the developer community that lives within the foundation, um, around the fundamental topic of Will new features that we're using foundation money, donor provided money to, to create, um, will, will those features be built with an eye towards usage anywhere other than the WMF production cluster? And for me, that's the, the root, this is the root question behind that perennial debate um, and, and I thank you to Gilles and, and everybody else who brought some actual third party voices into this discussion because I've, I've played devil's advocate a lot of times on, on IRC and in person about like, well, but no, this guy who can't do this or, or this, this company that can't do that. Um, but to me, that's the, the point of the urgency is that Every time we have that debate yet again, when we're building a new piece of software, we're wasting donor funds. And we need to, one way or the other, either rip off the Band-Aid and say that all the, all the work that the foundation pays for to go into the product does not need to care about third-party concerns and use and can be focused on the foundation's projects, or that this is fundamentally a use case that always has to be present in everything we build. And then we don't have to debate it 25 times a quarter. Mm -hmm. So 
in, in our session, which is on the Etherpad steak and wine, uh, we had, uh, we, we talked about and actually had people put skin in the game to start developing the way to rip off the Band-Aid, which is creating the MediaWiki Foundation, which we've all sat around and BSed about endlessly. But here we have people who are actually willing to do things to make a separate organization, one that we don't have to worry about all these money issues. So it can focus on MediaWiki for everyone and the foundation can focus on English Wikipedia. Um, to Brian's comment, I think the, there's not actually such a big gap between uh, what we need for developers, for example, and what third party users need. Um, developers don't want to run large clusters on their laptops to, to test some simple feature. They are very happy to use a SQLite backend. Um, continuous integration, similarly, it's a lot simpler to use a SQLite backend and, and testing and don't spin up like a huge replicated MySQL cluster, for example. So we are doing this work already and doing it for our own reasons, but it also turns out to benefit third party users. So I don't think there's always this big gap between uh, what we need and third party users need. Um, I see the biggest gap really in how do we get this into the hands of users? Like how do we package it? How do we make it easy to install and upgrade? All right, I guess I'll fill the gap. Um, so, Gilles, if you could scroll up in the Etherpad and uh, just look at the list of questions, I've tried to, I've tried to like keep this tight. So, between lines 15 and 35, um, there you go. So, this is the list of questions that I think we've explored so far, but they're still questions. Um, and I think one of the things that may be a good next step after this session is going to be to to sort these questions, figure out which ones are the important questions, which ones are distractions, and then, um, and then make a decision as to which, you know, what the answer should actually be. But that would be what I would propose as a way forward on this is to, it, it, and do we have the complete list of questions here or not is my question to you. <laughs> should I? Want to just read them out loud, or should we uh, it's hard for me to read from read, here. Let me let me let me read them out loud. Okay, so, um, so uh, this is this is basically what I was taking in real time as we were talking through this. And granted, I think I only t started taking some of these notes a little bit into the session, so I may have missed some of the things we've explored here. But so which uh, so starting at line fifteen, which hosting platforms are or should be supported? Do we need to stick with a lamp stack? Um, can we decide some version in the not too distant future be a p quote last pure p PHP implementation? Can we drop support for shared hosting? How do we make sure that non Wikimedia users benefit? Should M Wikimedia fork MediaWiki? If we if we move to requiring SOA, should we invest in supporting non Wikimedia installs and migrating? Is it worth maintaining uh, PHP versions of non PHP software? Uh, for uh, Wikimedia deploys. Does MediaWiki need a governance structure outside of Wikimedia? Does Wikimedia need to support non-Wikipedia use cases better? Does there need to be a, quote, MediaWiki foundation? What problems are we trying to solve by dropping p pure PHP support? What's wrong with the status quo? What constitutes the quote, full MediaWiki experience. How do we make the experience of installing MediaWiki result in something like editing Wikipedia? How should non-Wikipedia, or excuse me, non-Wikimedia use cases be funded? Does, is Visual Editor and Parsoid part of the core MediaWiki experience? If so, should the MediaWiki core requirements be changed to reflect that? Or could Parsoid be ported to PHP? Can VM-based hosts uh, be a low-budget solution that replaces shared hosting? Can we remove the delta between the setup for new Wikimedia developers and the setup for low-budget hosting? 
Should we put greater support behind Gabriel's MediaWiki Media containers project? Should we put more effort behind other non Wikimedia open content efforts and improve outreach to other open content efforts? Sh should Wikimedia operate a wiki farm to improve Wikimedia's support for wiki farms? What's the urgency to move uh, the line? What is, what is our plan for a plan? Who gets to make the decision? And are use cases off of the Wikimedia Foundation produ production cluster important? So those are the questions that I've captured. Now, now I think maybe the next step is you know, partly just making sure, does, is that the list of questions? Is there anything missing from there? And then which are the most, which are the most important questions, um, I think, is the next uh, step to get the answer to. So I think those are excellent, excellent, excellent questions. Um, and I do want to thank everybody here for participating in the discussion. Um, we've had some really, really, really good stuff both today and earlier, or both right now and earlier today. Um, and I really would like everybody to continue discussing as we work on this stuff uh, and try to actually sort of narrow things down into some real action points. Um, yeah, the, the one thing I was going to add is uh, should we operate a wiki farm? But it's already in there. Uh, <laughs> I'm very happy with these. I would love to actually uh, distill this a little more. Maybe we actually want to run a survey. I hate to say survey, but getting a better idea of what, what's the opinion out there, both within you know our, our core developers, our third-party extension developers, and some other people running those wiki farms, some of which we've spoken to today, many of which we have not. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with this set. Uh, definitely the question um, of how to deal with services is sort of the core technical question. Uh, the human question is how do we continue to develop MediaWiki for third parties uh, in a way that is both good for Wikimedia and good for everybody else. Uh, my personal opinion is that we should be striving to make the MediaWiki core as clean and modular as possible. Uh, I really like the idea that services can be swapped out and replaced. So if we have something that's very, very popular, like visual editor, we want to be able to support it for many, many people, not just for ourselves. Maybe that does mean that we'll have to make some changes to Parsoid. Maybe it means that we'll sort of recommend those people move towards the uh, you know, oft-tabled idea of an all HTML wiki which would not require Parsoid. Uh, another possibility, of course, is just providing Parsoid as a service. Um, there's, there's so many technical details, we're not going to have time to get into the rest of them. Uh, but I think we have a really good start here. I would actually be interested to hear from third party users here about their opinions and needs. What's your take on this? What are the biggest things for you on that list? So I just want to add, from talking to people earlier today, one big one is uh, extension compatibility across versions. Uh, so a lot of times, uh, because our extension interfaces aren't super great, it's very easy to write an extension that digs into parts of the code base that maybe it shouldn't and they become very fragile. Uh, so one thing that I want to think about is better extension interfaces uh, to allow for cleaner compatibility so you don't have to go through and fix a million things. As an alternative or to go along with it, of course, helping people to identify and fix their problems would be really good. Uh, it, I think, would be very reasonable for, uh, to offer that as a service. Uh, I think the ideas of, uh, for instance, commercial support is additional funding for additional MediaWiki support is something we should explore. Maybe that has to be outside WMF. There's lots of people talking about stuff where that could dovetail in. So I will stop talking now and leave it to other people. So from World University and School's perspective, uh, 
sort of three or four main questions. Um, how can we be part of the governance process? Um, what um, test case possibilities are there to kind of uh, question by question um, identify which are most relevant as we move forward? Um, in the third aspect, interlingually especially, um, planning for potentially all 8,000 languages and major universities in all countries' main languages. In, in brief. Um, well, I think I, I articulated some of the um, our concerns earlier. Um, so certainly ease of keeping up to date with um, with core as as it progresses, um, and uh, I was trying to think of how to articulate one of the other nagging points that I had, and 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 Brian raised it perfectly, which is, you know, we do have a suite of extensions that we've developed, and in addition, so every time I need to upgrade MediaWiki version, I also need to go through our extensions and update them in ways that don't necessarily improve their functionality at all, but keep them consistent with core. And um, I have several um, authentication extensions out there that are going to have massive changes coming up that, um, that I'm going to have to invest time in figuring out how to do that. So, um, and that's, again, not necessarily giving us any benefit aside from just keeping up with changes in MediaWiki Core. And I guess I'm not really complaining about that in the sense that I know that MediaWiki Core has to progress, and I know that this is necessary. But when you add up the amount of time that I spend maintaining the infrastructure and, um, and upgrading when a new version comes out, and then making sure that the ripple effect of all of our extensions upgrading, again, I come back to my wine from earlier, I want to be doing new, innovative, cool things, and I'm spending a lot of time just making sure that things continue to work the way they did before. And I, I thought that the idea of um, having Wikimedia operate a wiki farm was, was interesting in the sense of, yes, you know, you certainly get you, you to experience some of the issues that we have, although I would argue that you've got a suite of highly trained people that, you know, their bread and butter is keeping the software running. And that's, you know, what you need to do is take somebody like me who's also trying to do another job and have them maintain the wiki farm and then you'll feel our pain. Um, but, um, you know, certainly having that infrastructure and I spent some time recently working on Ansible scripts to, so I can now point at an empty VM and spin up our wiki farm infrastructure. And if anybody would like to see those just to get a sense of how we construct our wiki farm, I'd be more than happy to provide that. Um, one of the things that we find that when we upgrade, it's not just um, so yes, we have to install, you know, upgrade the core MediaWiki software. We have to upgrade the extensions, but then we need to go through all of our content and see how the content. It's there's no without visiting every page in every one of our wikis, you don't necessarily know that something broke. So your your comment before was a very good one, but I would argue it, having you host a wiki farm does not necessarily mean that it will be immediately obvious to you when something breaks. Because unless somebody happens to visit the page where all of the sudden your table's all munged up or whatever, because, or you know, for us, for Semantic Media Wiki, the query format has changed slightly and all of a sudden everything looks weird um, or doesn't give you the results you expected. Uh, unless you happen to visit that page, you're not going to know that it's broken. And that's another thing that we've been struggling with, trying to figure out a good way to test all of our wikis so that when we're going to do an under the hood upgrade across all of our wiki farm infrastructure for all of our wikis for all of our users, um, we would like to minimize the amount of screaming that's coming back to us afterwards with things as minimal as when we went to, I want to say 1.25, somebody was really upset about the font change. Uh, <laughs> you know, and if they're upset about something as minimal as that, 
you know, when their math formulas stop rendering correctly, that's going to be even worse. So, um, so it's a multi-layered problem. And that's the kind of things that I deal with on a daily basis. All right, thank you. Um, it's true that our continuous integration uh, stuff is not is not really reusable by others. So we have tests that check that kind of thing for Wikipedia and other wikis that we run. But it's so like buried inside all our infrastructure that you can't just, it's not easy for you to take and adapt to your own site. So I guess there's also a case to be made for our um, continuous integration uh, stuff to be made easier for people to take and apply to their own wikis. Uh, I just want to talk about upgrading a little bit since Brian brought it up. And one of the things um, I'm concerned about is that we are making these decisions on the premise that people are using newer media wiki versions. But if we look at things like Wiki Apiary, we see that there's a large number of wikis still stuck on 1.16. And uh, we don't have a very strong incentive for people to upgrade because a lot of the features are Wikipedia-centric and not necessarily for whatever their personal use case is. And as a side thing that Tim pointed out was that Looking at, he looked at like 1.13, and we haven't had any major RCEs in MediaWiki uh, since then. So there's really no incentive from a security perspective for people to upgrade, which is a good thing, but also a not so good thing. Yeah, I think it would be good to get to make to do a survey about that, like to figure out why people are sticking to the old versions, because we have different explanations, but we don't know what the main reason is. Um, Lots of theories, but no real data about it. One quick comment about uh, Parsoid. And uh, so it's just so people don't have unrealist unrealistic expectations. Porting Parsoid to PHP is a really non-trivial problem, and that's not going to happen anytime soon, simply because PHP, for example, does not even have a HTML5 parser. And if we had to do it in PHP, we wouldn't have happened either. So I mean, there are practical constraints as to why it's not in PHP. And I have uh, mentioned this on the fab task as well as on uh, mailing this thread. So just to be clear uh, that I wanted to record it on the, as part of this. Thanks. All right. Should we wrap this up and go to the bus? All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>